Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship with Calvin Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you are uh, tuning in and, um, and joining us in spirit as we, uh, as we gather, um, as we gather in places all over uh, to worship the Lord together. Uh, just a few notes about, uh, about the, the service. Um, on our website, uh, there is a, a, a place where you can download uh, and, um, and print out or just have on your, your phone the, the liturgy for this morning's worship service, uh, but also everything you need, um, all the, the responsive readings, prayers, everything you need uh, will be on your, on your screen as well. So um, whatever is, uh, is best for you to, to join in, in worship, please, uh, please do so. Uh, this morning here in just a moment, um, uh, when we uh, begin with our call to worship, uh, Linda Tent, who is one of our deacons, uh, will be assisting uh, in this morning's uh, worship service as well. So let's, uh, let's begin uh, by joining our hearts together um, as, we, uh, as we worship the Lord. Let us begin um, by joining in prayer. Let us pray. Lord... The present is passing away into your future. Therefore, help us to turn our hearts to you. For true power and steadfast love belong to you. Through our worship, may we learn to trust in you as we pour out our hearts before you. Lord, be our refuge. Amen. Good morning. Today's call to worship is our call this morning is from Psalm 62. Please join us in this responsive reading with the bold print on your screens. On God rests my deliverance and my honor. My righty rock, my righty rock, my refuge refuge is in God. Rust in him, trust in him in all times. O people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge refuge for for us. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this. Power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. Please join us in singing our opening hymn, How Firm a Foundation. The words will be on your screen. I 
This morning's prayer of confession is the gospel writer Mark tells us that Jesus began by proclaiming, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and live in the good news. Let us do just that, repenting and turning toward God, beginning by confessing our sin together. Please join me in the prayer of confession, which will be on your screen, followed by a moment of personal confession. Let us pray. God of glory, you sent Jesus among us as the light of the world to reveal your love for all people. We confess that our sin and pride hide the brightness of your light. We turn away from the poor. We ignore cries for justice. We do not strive for peace. Lord, we confess we both ask earthly kingdoms to carry the weight of our eternal hopes and at the same time, we forget our prayers that your kingdom would come to earth, on earth, even as it is in heaven. In your mercy, cleanse us of our sin. Through your spirit, make of us something new in Christ. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Now having confessed, hear again these same words of Jesus. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Sisters and brothers, in Jesus Christ, we are invited as participants in God's kingdom. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God, and may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. We invite you now uh, to take a moment uh, and share the peace of Christ with someone, perhaps somebody in your household, um, perhaps by uh, leaving a, a, a comment or a message on um, this Facebook page, perhaps by sending a text message or making a note to yourself uh, to give somebody a, a call or write a note um, uh, later on today or later on this week. But, uh, but however we do it, let us continue uh, to share the peace of Christ with one another. Our scripture this morning is from the first chapter of John's Gospel account, verses 35 through 51. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon, and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, I will make you fish, a, you fish for people. 
the, and immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Excuse me. The Lord, pour out your spirit that we may hear your word and trust in it. Tell us what we need to hear and show us how to turn and follow Jesus. Amen. So we are, uh, we are back in Mark this week after a, a brief sojourn in John last week. Uh, and we, we pick up uh, where we left off with Mark uh, two weeks ago. And so we are back uh, to that sometimes frenzied, no frills, right to the point and no more narrative style of Mark. If you remember, Jesus has just been baptized. The heavens have just been torn open. The Spirit has come right on through and right down, descending like a dove upon Him. And the same Spirit has driven Him out into the wilderness to be tempted for for 40 days by Satan with the wild beasts surrounding and the angels ministering. And now, as if all that weren't enough, John the baptizer has just been arrested by the powers that be. And so we would do well to remember the charged atmosphere that Jesus steps into, governing officials arresting John there in in this land that is is occupied by, by the kingdom, by the empire of Rome. And Galilee itself is situated in in such a place that that it is it is often a, a crossroads of a sort with all sorts of of intersecting political, cultural, and social tensions. And into this fraught and charged time and place steps Jesus. He came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Now when Mark writes this, when Mark tells us this, this does not mean that, that Jesus simply went around repeating just these, these same two sentences over and over and over again. Rather, rather, what it means is that everything that Jesus began to say and do as he went around proclaiming, proclaiming this message, it was all about proclaiming this message. What Mark gives us here is the summary, the point of everything that Jesus went around saying and doing was all all in service to proclaiming this, that the kingdom has come near, repent and believe in the good news. Proclaiming the good news of God. Proclaiming, if we want to, uh, to use the old English word for, for good news or good report, he was proclaiming the good spell, the gospel of God. Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming, if we want to go back even further and use Mark's Greek word here for good news or a good report, proclaiming the euangelion of God. Now, euangelion, that's where we eventually get words like evangelism. It simply means good news, good report. And this particular word, It was a word that itself was filled and charged with with more than just a happy bit of gossip. This word, euangelion, it was the word used for when, when a messenger was sent from the front lines of battle to go tell others that there had been a great tide turning victory. It was the word that was used for when a a herald was sent out to, to all the four corners to say, to say that the former king's reign was over and a new king and a new reign had begun. Heralds sent with the euangelion that everything 
had changed. The old powers were disrupted and gone, and a new power and a new authority was at work. News of a new reign, a new reality of life. Jesus came proclaiming this UN Galleon of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. Fulfilled not because we've just happened to flip a page on a calendar like we do every year or every day or every week, but fulfilled because enough is enough. It's not chronological time he's talking about. It's, it's kairos time. Whatever our clocks and calendars may say, Jesus says the time is ripe. And so the kingdom of God has come near. It is at hand. What Jesus begins with is a proclamation of a fact that has happened. Now the stubborn thing about facts is that facts are facts, whatever we may feel about them. Sometimes even, in fact, the the only thing facts have going for them is that they happen to be true. They happen to describe what is really going on. Whatever we may feel about them, by their very nature, they are stubbornly true. And so they demand that we respond to them in one way or another, that we take them into account. Jesus begins here with an announcement of fact. That God has acted, that God has done something, that God has drawn near. Because a kingdom is always an extension of of its king, right? You want to know what a king is like? You look at the kingdom. You want to know what what a kingdom is like? You look at the king. And this is the message of Jesus that he comes proclaiming. That in him something has happened. Jesus here is not primarily a a teacher with a message or a or a wise sage with, with good advice. He is telling of good news. He is an event of God in history. He is the event of God in history. Jesus shows up here and and is both the herald or messenger of this UN Galleon of God, and he is also the very UN Galleon itself. The UN Galleon, the good news of all UN Galleons, right here. Now, no messenger of a new king's reign would would show up and say, hey, guess what? So-and-so has now become king, so if you'd like to, maybe if, if you want, you should consider accepting them as your king. No, what the messenger says is this is the king. This is now their kingdom. And so now, now we live like this. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. So therefore, because of this, repent and believe in the good news. We are called to to respond by, by repenting and believing. We are called to repent and believe, to repent and trust. Not so that God's kingdom will be near to us. But rather, we, we repent and believe, we repent and trust Because God's kingdom has already come near to us. In God's kingdom, imperatives always flow from the indicative of what God has already done. That is the message. This this is the proclamation of Jesus. Not just of his words, but of who he is. This is what has happened. The kingdom of God has come near, Jesus says. Or, in the words of my son, when I asked him what I should preach this week, he looked at me with this look. It was a very teenager sort of look. I'm like, really, Dad? Really? You should know this by now. And then he just said, God loves you. Done. Done. The kingdom has come near. God has made himself near. Done. This is the way it is. 
This is Jesus telling us how it is. This is the stubborn reality of Jesus right here. The kingdom has come near. And so for everything and anything else, this is where it all has to start. But even then, Jesus nudges us, directs us. We might be saying, okay, that's done. The kingdom is near. Now what? What do we do with that? Well, Jesus tells us God is so near. He's not even leaving us on our own to to figure out what we do with this news. The kingdom of God has come near, Jesus says. So repent and believe in the good news. Repent and believe. So then if, if and when we're wondering what that's all about, what does it mean to repent and believe? Well, the first thing that Mark tells us after this is established is that Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee and he saw some folks fishing. Simon and his brother Andrew, they are casting their nets into the sea. And Jesus says, follow me. Follow me. And they immediately, right? There's that word that Mark loves. We talked about it a couple, couple weeks ago. That word, euthus. Immediately, at once. Everyone is always immediately doing things or doing that. No wonder, right? Given what Jesus is proclaiming, given what has come near. Of course, immediacy is the response. They immediately drop their nets. and They leave them behind and they follow Jesus. And then Jesus sees two other brothers, James and John. They're out in their boats, mending their nets. And immediately, Jesus calls to them. And they leave not just their their unmended nets, but, but even their father there in the boat with some other hired helpers. Repent and believe the good news. These fishermen were not doing anything wrong or sinful. They were doing living life. They were doing what they were supposed to be doing. And yet, what happened when Jesus showed up is is they turned, they dropped, they let go of, they left behind some things for the simple reason that Jesus showed up, called for them to follow, and they turned toward Him and began to follow Him. Now, we often think of repentance as primarily about feeling really really bad or or guilty or or ashamed about something that we've done. And then resolving to never do it again. And to be sure, there are certainly times when, when that is what repentance might entail or look like or ask of us. That's why we, every week when we gather together, we confess together, we repent together. Seeing the truth of, of how we have sinned or, or been complicit in or even just, just benefited from sin. And turning from that. That's repentance. But that's not all that repentance is. Because what, what repentance really is, down even deeper than that, is being confronted with what is true. And turning towards what is true. Responding to what is true. Living in light of what is stubbornly true. Turning toward what has already turned towards you. The kingdom of God has come near. So repent, turn, and believe in this good news. Repentance is simply turning your attention to Jesus. Turning your attention to Jesus. Maybe it's for the first time, but not for the last time. Because wherever we are, wherever we find ourselves, when we, when we recognize more and more that God's kingdom has drawn near, it, it should always reorient our focus. It should always retune our hearts and reset our minds. These fishermen here are an example of that. Not because being a fisherman was, was wrong or bad or that they shouldn't be doing it, but simply because when, when Jesus got their attention, 
they were called elsewhere. They changed the direction of their lives, leaving behind something good and fine for the simple reason that goodness himself was standing there calling out to them. Their lives became, became drawn, drawn to, turned towards, oriented around Jesus and the nearness of God's kingdom. So dropping their nets, leaving their bewildered father there in the boat, letting go of something, leaving something behind. Because you can't turn towards something without also turning away from something else. Jesus called, they turned, and they believed, they trusted in the one that was calling them. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent, turn, focus, refocus, and believe, trust in this good news of what has come near. Follow me, Jesus said. Follow me and I will... Well, he says, follow me and then makes a promise to them. Our translation, we read from the the New Revised Standard Version, it says, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Other translations, other versions read something like, I will make you become fishers of people. Which is actually captures the sense a little, little better here because Jesus is not talking about follow me and your to-do list is going to get longer. Or follow me and I'm going to make you do stuff. No, that's not really what he's saying here. What he's saying is follow me and I will make you become this. I will transform you into something new, into a new type of person using even who you already are to follow me more deeply and more closely. Good news has happened. The kingdom of God has drawn near. And so turn toward it, Jesus says, and trust in it and you will be changed. You will become someone called now to cast not just fishing nets into the sea to make a living, but to cast far and wide into the world the things of this kingdom that have drawn near. Now for us, we too are likewise confronted with this same UN Galleon, this same good news that is still stubbornly true. The same immediacy of God's kingdom that has come and continues to come near in Jesus. The same good news comes with these same imperatives. Repent and believe. Turn toward and trust in. Now because we are are people, we are all normal people in one way or another, so no doubt repenting, turning toward Jesus will always involve us recognizing where we've gotten it wrong. In fact, part of of what it means to trust in this good news is that we don't have to pretend that we haven't gotten things wrong. We can trust that this this news that Jesus proclaims, we can trust that Jesus is good. Even when we get things wrong. But this call, this imperative is also simply about about what am I? What are we turning toward each day? What are we letting go of so that we have hands that are free to turn and hold on to something else? Or hands open to reach out and offer? What might we need to leave behind? to follow Jesus into God's future. This example of these early disciples dropping their fishing nets and and even leaving their, their no doubt bewildered and confused father there in the boat. It is not a demand for each of us to, to quit our jobs or turn our backs on family or friends or anything at all like that. But it is an example of the reorientation of life 
that God's kingdom requires. That we are called, as one commentator remarked, that we are, we are called to, to look, to listen, and to give full attention to the kingdom which is arriving. And so as we hear again of this good news that Jesus proclaims, that Jesus is, what would it look like if this really was what we gave our attention to? If this really was what what caught or captured our attention? If this is what we turn toward, trusting that it is stubbornly true, That what has come near is the promise of the place where the brokenhearted are bound up, the proud are scattered, the powerful brought down, and the hungry are filled with good things. The promise of the place where justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, where the poor are brought good news, release proclaimed to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and freedom to the oppressed. The promise of this place that has drawn near, where the poor and poor in spirit and those who mourn and the meek and those hungering and thirsting for righteousness and justice, where the, where the merciful, the pure in heart and the peacemakers and, and those who are persecuted for righteousness and for justice sake, they are the ones who are blessed. That what has drawn near is the promise of a place where feet are washed, the hungry fed, the stranger welcomed, the naked clothed, the sick and imprisoned visited. That what has drawn near is the promise of the place where mustard seeds move mountains and crosses are taken up. The one sheep out of 99 matters. Neighbors are made by the most unlikely of people and long-lost wayward sons are welcomed home with reckless abandon. What if, family, what if we stubbornly believed that this was the stubborn reality that has come near that this was the stubborn reality of who Jesus is and what the nearness of His kingdom was like? What if the promised nearness of this was what captured our attention? And we trusted that this was indeed good news. What more then could we want to turn towards? And what more could we possibly give our attention to? And how? How could we not become people set about to cast this good news far and wide? Jesus came proclaiming the good news of God saying the time is fulfilled, the time is ripe, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent. Turn toward what is already now turned toward you and believe. Trust in this good news. Amen. May it be so. And may we be so.
Jesus summons us all. We will rise up and follow Christ before and beside us. Loving pattern to guide us as we answer the call. When we faint and grow weary, from the bearing of burdens with the message of comfort Jesus summons us all we'll rise up and follow Christ before and beside us loving pattern to guide us as we answer the call eyes of a stranger, tearful joy us so frighten, words that cry to be challenged, Jesus summons us all. Fear or false witness, words that cry to be challenged. Jesus summons us all. We will rise up and follow Christ before and beside us, loving pattern to guide us as we answer the call. In each moment. Steadfast even through trembling In the yearning for justice Jesus summons us all We'll rise up and follow Christ before and beside us A loving pattern to guide us As we answer the Like disciples before us from the city or seashore, risking selfless compassion, Jesus summons us all. We'll rise up and follow. Invitation to the offering, uh, Psalm 62, verse 6, reminds us, to God it my, is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. Standing on the rock, let us celebrate our salvation by giving into God's kingdom that is drawn and continues to draw near. Please prayer, prayerfully consider the time, talents, or gifts that you have received and how you can give them back to God in love and in service to others. For those who give to the ministry of the church as a part of this, you can do so by mailing your gifts to the church office or by using the online giving portion option on your website. But whatever you give and in whatever way you give, let us do so with glad and generous hearts. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, praise him all creatures here below, praise him above the heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful God, you have saved us for a purpose. So we give these gifts, even as we give our lives to you. Let them cast the goodness of your kingdom far and wide. Lord, make of us a people who do the same. Amen. I want to uh, take a moment and um, just uh, highlight uh, some, some announcements of what's coming up and going on in the life of the, of the church. Um, the first is uh, that we have our updated worship schedule. We, are, uh, we will be continuing uh, with online worship only uh, through the end of February. Um, so uh, all worship will be, uh, be live streamed. Um, and online uh, through at least February uh, as we continue to, um, to navigate and discern uh, how to uh, how to best uh, love God and love our neighbor uh, in this, uh, these difficult circumstances of, of this uh, continuing pandemic. Uh, a reminder about uh, the Lord's Supper. We still celebrate um, the Sacrament of Communion on the first Sunday of, of each month. Each month. Uh, so the next one will be uh, two Sundays from now. And uh, communion elements are available uh, to pick up um, at the church. Uh, so uh, just let us know and we can make sure to provide those for you. I know um, many, if not most of you, um, already have yours uh, for, for February. Uh, but if you don't, just let us know and we can uh, make sure to get them uh, to you. Also, uh, Zoom fellowship, uh, a time just to, to see each other and chat um, is on the third Sunday of each month at 12, 12.30. The Zoom link uh, is, uh, is emailed out, and you can also, uh, if you don't have that, um, if you don't get it, you can uh, send the, the church office an email, uh, contact the church office, and we'll get you that Zoom link. Next up, coming up next Sunday, is our annual congregational meeting. Uh, that is uh, January 31st, next Sunday. Uh, it will be on Zoom. Um, the, uh, the Zoom link will be uh, sent out. If you have any trouble accessing that, please, please let us know. Um, we are also mailing out all the materials uh, for this meeting. Uh, you should be receiving those um, shortly uh, this week, either in electronic format. Um, if, you need, uh, if you need a hard copy, um, let us know, and we can, uh, we can make sure that's available to you as well. The purpose of this meeting is to receive... Uh, the 2020 annual reports and receive the 2021 budget that the session uh, just approved uh, this past week. Uh, it's also uh, to, uh, to vote on approving uh, the pastors. That's, that's me. Um, my terms of call for uh, this new year, for 2021. Uh, speaking of the budget, I uh, do also just want to um, remind you that uh, if you were planning on um, sending in a pledge for this, this coming year and have not done so, uh, I know it's, uh, it's tough to keep everything in mind, especially when we're not able to, to all come together every week. Um, but uh, if you were, were planning on uh, making a, a pledge commitment to the church uh, for this coming year and have not done so, uh, it's not too late. Uh, so please, uh, please send, send those in. Uh, I also, uh, before we pray here, want to uh, just let you know that um, the, uh, the session has, uh, this past week, has, looking ahead to this coming year, has, uh, has reformatted, has restructured um, how we go about lots of the ministry here in the, in the church um, through, uh, through various committees. And we've consolidated uh, a lot of them. Um, just because of, of how ministry is very different right now. Uh, and so, uh, just as an example, instead of having separate uh, fellowship committees and worship committees and Christian ed committees, um, what we've done is, is uh, formed uh, one committee, a congregational care uh, committee, um, that will hopefully be able to look more holistically at, uh, at the needs um, of this congregation, of uh, in all those different areas, uh, but can do so holistically and um, maybe even uh, with imagination of what might be possible and needed in this uh, strange and difficult time that we find ourselves in. 
Um, and we've also done this in terms of, of looking outward and, and going outward into the wider community and um, have consolidated into uh, a community care committee. Um, part of the reason is uh, that uh, in this time, uh, the time is ripe for new opportunities uh, in these areas, uh, both um, caring for one another and uh, our, com- our communities. And so if you have an interest in these areas, if you have uh, ideas, things you've thought of, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could do something like this uh, during, during this time? Um, please let us know. Uh, we, are, we are looking for people to, to help out on these committees. So uh, if you have ideas or if you just want to be involved and, and feel God pulling you into something new, um, please, uh, please let us know. Um, this is an exciting, uh, exciting thing, and, uh, and God is... Um, God is preparing to do, do some, some really, really good, awesome stuff um, in, in this church uh, and through this church. Uh, so, um, yeah, it, consider the possibility of being involved in, in, in that way. But now it is time for us uh, to go to the Lord in prayer as we lift up uh, the needs of our communities, the needs of the world, and the needs of one another. So let us, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. God, you who holds the past and who holds the present as it gives way into your future, Lord, we acknowledge how hard it is to believe the good news that your kingdom has drawn near. Yet, Lord, we still believe And so help us in our unbelief. Lord, we pray this morning for for people who are highly placed in power and authority, that they may focus their eyes on you. And we pray for the, the lowly victims of power, that you may provide and even be a refuge. Lord, for the the change in political power in our nation this week. Lord, we pray. We pray for former President Trump and former Vice President Pence as they step down. And we pray for our new President Biden and Vice President Harris as they step into this new responsibility. And Lord, we celebrate the milestone that this represents, the milestone of the first woman to hold such high office, the first black woman and first person of Indian descent. Lord, may they and their administration and all in Congress and all our our local leaders, those in local and national places of power, Lord, may they administer justly and restoratively in a nation that is filled with so much hurt. Lord, as our nation has, has reached a tragic milestone, surpassing 400,000 deaths from this pandemic, Lord, we take a moment to just lift up and acknowledge before you the grief. Lord, this is a grief that is felt not just in our families and local communities or even just our nation, but it is a grief that is felt across the world. Lord, comfort families and friends of those who have died. Heal those who are sick. Strengthen those who give care. Give wisdom to public health officials that are tasked with the logistics of of vaccine rollouts. And help us all make decisions that embody love for you and love for neighbor. Lord, we remember the family and friends of Marilyn McPhail mourning her death. And the Pandolfis, mourning the death of their friend Steve. 
We pray for Ann Ross as she continues chemo treatments. Betty's friends. Emily, who is recovering from a heart attack. Maxine, who is receiving cancer treatments. And Maria, who is, who is waiting to see if the treatments worked. We continue to pray for the continued healing and recovery of Jeannie and Judy and of those with COVID, Judy, or Judy recovering from a hospital stay and those recovering from COVID, Bob, Walter, and Shirley. And we pray for Rachel's friend, Mark, who's in the hospital with COVID. We continue to remember and lift up Dot and Miriam, Elaine and Gladys and all at the Chapel Hill Waterman, Lake, Madonna Manor, the Highlands and Atria Assisted Living Facilities and and all who are separated from family and friends in this time. And now, Lord, we take a moment to each offer our own prayers for all those who are on our hearts and our minds. Lord, we pray for the ministry of your church and all its particular congregations in various places around the world, for the ministry to which you call us here in this place, Lord, that we may be changed, ever turning toward you and your kingdom that has come near, even as we cast near and far this same good news of your kingdom come near. Lord, teach us to follow you. And through your spirit at work in us, may we embody in our hands and our feet this prayer that is so often on our lips as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to join in singing our closing hymn, Lord, You Have Come to the Lakeshore. I labor to give up. 
others rest in constant love that keeps on loving. And may Christ make of us those who would cast far and wide the goodness and promise of his kingdom. The love of God the Father, the grace of his Son Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with you now and forevermore. Amen.